When we looked at propositional logic, we saw that by following these rules and given some initial information, we could prove certain things. In a recent video, we saw that we could take our propositional logic representations and add quantifiers in order to produce a predicate logic representation. Now we're going to look at how we could reason through uh, some predicate logic representations of things given some initial facts. But the basic idea is this. We need to strip the quantifiers. That is, we have something like P of X. We need to get rid of this part. Then we're going to apply our propositional logic rules. And then finally, in some cases, we'll add back quantifiers. So in some cases, add quantifiers to the results. So remember, we had the universal quantifier. And to eliminate this, we're going to use universal instantiation. All right? And then we have the existential quantifier. And in order to eliminate this, we'll use existential instantiation. And then we'll have two ways to put things back as needed, okay? So in this video, we're going to look at this first one, universal instantiation. So the idea, of course, is to eliminate this and then do things with it. So let's look at this problem. For all x, if a of x implies b of x, and we have a specific value t from the domain that x is drawn from, then we will show that b of t is true. So how do we do that? We're going to have our hypothesis just like we did before. So this is hypothesis, this is hypothesis. Now what we want to do is, here I'm talking about A of T. I want to take this right here and perform this instantiation. That is, represent it by talking about a particular value within the domain, which happens to be T here. So this will just be A of T implies B of T. And so this would be from step one, universal instantiation. And now they have A of T and A of T implies B of T. Then we can get B of T by saying two, three, and modus ponens, just like before. Okay? So there's where we're using this. In this case, we're not adding anything back. We'll do that in a later video, but I'm just trying to get you sort of seeing what's happening here. Let's look at another example. So it says for all x, a of x or b of x, and 
the negative of a, a of t implies b of t. So our first hypothesis. Our second hypothesis. So a of t or b of t. So this is b1, universal instantiation. And then what do we have here? Well, when I look back at my sheet, this looks like disjunctive syllogism. P or Q and not P allows me to derive Q. So this is basically what I have here. This would be the P, this would be the Q. So this would be two, three, Just disjunctive syllogism, which came straight off the sheet. All right? So this is what we introduced in this video, universal instantiation.